ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله الله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون الله سبحانه وتعالى يقول يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون ويقول ايضا في كتابه العزيز يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اعاذني الله واياكم من عذاب النار dear brothers and sisters allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the quran that we should rely on him and seek his forgiveness and ask him for assistance and praise him because all praise is due to him. And we ask him to shield us from the evils of our souls and we ask him to cleanse us from the sins that result from our very own actions. Whomsoever Allah Azza wa Jal guides, no one shall be able to misguide. And whomsoever Allah leaves astray or lost, no one shall be able to guide. I testify that there is no other God except Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala Azza wa Jal alone. And I testify that Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam is his final prophet and messenger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran saying, O oh, you who have believed, fear Allah as he is worthy of your fear. And do not let death catch you except in a state of submission to his will or as Muslims. Maintain a life of obedience to Allah. Maintain a life of Islam, maintain a life of submission to the will of Allah, so that when death, when death catches up to you, you're in a state of Islam, you're in a state of submission to His will. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, O oh, you people, fear your Lord who created you from one soul, and from that soul created its mate. And from both of them He dispersed or produced so many men and women, and fear Allah through whom you interact with each other. And fear the rights of those that are next of kin. Respect the rights of your family members. Your family members, your fathers, your children, your brothers, your sisters, they have rights upon you. Respect those rights. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always observing you, recording every action, recording every word. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in the Quran, O you who have believed, fear Allah and speak only the truth. Speak only these words that you will never regret. Speak only the words of those that are righteous. So that Allah may reform your actions. If you, if you focus on what you say and only speak the truth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fix your actions for you. He will help you with your deeds and forgive your sins. And whosoever obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger has definitely achieved a great achievement. Brothers and sisters, again and again and again, the most truthful of all words is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the best guidance is the guidance of Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, because without his guidance, without the sunnah, we may interpret the Qur'an differently. Without the guidance of Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, we will not have one understanding of the Qur'an. We'll all be different. And the worst matters of deen are bid'ah. 
innovations, introductions of new things into the deen, the religion, that we haven't learned from Prophet Muhammad والسلام, or those who follow him. The worst, the worst matters in deen are those bid'ah, those innovations. Because all of them lead to misguidance and misguidance leads to the fire of hell. Of help, now there is no doubt that the only religion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has approved and ordained for His creation is the religion of Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, إِنَّ الدِّينَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ الْإِسْلَامِ وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْ وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ The only religion in the sight of Allah is the religion of submission to His will, the religion of Islam. And whoever seeks a different religion, it will not be accepted from them. And in the hereafter, they will be with the losers. The only religion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed is submission to His will, the religion of Islam. You either accept the will of Allah and you submit to it, or you don't submit to it, you submit to something else. You either follow the path of Allah or you follow some other path. You either accept the will of Allah and you obey Him or you don't accept it and you obey somebody else. In whole or in part. So you can have little sins here and there or you can just reject the entire faith, the entire religion. Either way, there is only two ways of life in this life. The way that Allah has approved, which is the religion of Islam, and anything else. They're all the same, they're all equal. And there is no doubt that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent every prophet and every messenger from the beginning of time to deliver to us that will of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent prophets and messengers to tell us what his will is, what his religion is, who he is, what he wants, how he wants it. The prophets and messengers came one after another from the beginning of time so that they can guide us. And there is no different, this is not a different thing than what happened during the time of Prophet Muhammad والسلام, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appointed the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, to deliver that message to the Arabs. After hundreds of years of no prophets and no messengers. And when the message came to Prophet Muhammad والسلام, he wanted to deliver it to everybody, including those who received scriptures before the Arabs, like the Jews. So a companion of the Prophet والسلام, took the message of Prophet Muhammad والسلام, the message of Islam, and he went to the Jews of a tribe called Bani Qaynuqa, a big tribe of Jews in Medina. The companion of the Prophet والسلام, took this message and he went to them and he advised them to accept Islam. <coughs> and when he did, he told them, accept Islam, for you know it is the truth. This messenger of Allah, you know him more than you know your own children. He is recorded in your books. He is in the Torah. He is in the Injil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described him to you. And he commanded you, when he is revealed, you must accept him. And you must submit to his will. So some of these Jews, they made fun of the companion of Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. A lot of us know him, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. He told him, accept the message of Islam, stop using riba, stop using usury and credit cards and, and lend, not credit cards at the time, there were no cards, but I mean credit loans with credit, usury, riba. And follow the path of those that are righteous. And they made fun of him and they told him, well, you know what? You want us to loan things for the sake of Allah? You want us to loan your God our money? That means your God is poor and we are rich. And they said that. They described Allah as poor. So Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, he hit him, he struck him. So the Jewish man, his name is Finhas, he went to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, and he told 
and he told him, look what your companion did. He struck me on my face, he hit me. So the Messenger of Allah asked his companion Abu Bakr and he told him, did, is that really what happened? He told him, O Messenger of Allah, he described Allah as poor. And he said, your God is poor and we are rich. We the Jews are rich, your God is poor. So I struck him. The Jewish man rejected that story. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed verses in the Quran confirming what the companion said. Allah revealed verses in the Quran that confirm the version of the story of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. And the verses go like this. لَقَدْ سَمِعَ اللَّهُ قَوْلَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ فَقِيرٌ وَنَحْنُ أَغْنِيَاءٌ Verily, Allah has heard the words of those who said that Allah is poor and we are rich. سَنَكْتُبُ مَا قَالُوا We will record what they said. وَقَتْلَهُمُ الْأَنْبِيَاءَ بِغَيْرِ حَقٍّ And their killing of prophets without right. وَنَقُولُ ذُوكُ عَذَابَ الْحَرِيقِ And we will say to them, have a taste of the fire. This is what Allah said. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Imran, we will record their words. And their killing of prophets without right. Now, if you... If you do some tadabbur, if you reflect about these verses, you can, you can be sure that these men, the Jews men at the time, they said that Allah is poor. But what prophets did they kill? There was only one prophet living at the time, and he's the final one, Prophet Muhammad But Allah said, we're gonna record what they said, and their killing of prophets without right. Which prophets, O Allah? They didn't kill anybody. They didn't kill any, they only said that you are poor and we are rich. So which prophets did they kill? There was not even any other prophet living at the time except Prophet Muhammad So why are you saying that they killed other prophets? Is there a mistake in the Qur'an? Is there a mistake in that revelation or an error? And the answer is no. The answer is this, that type of person, if that person was living, or had been living during the time that the earlier Jews killed prophets and messengers, that person would be among those who participated in the killing. Basically, those who reject the commands of Allah and rise and or fall rather to that level or that standard of blaspheming, of calling Allah names, those people who go down to that level are equal to those who have killed his prophets and his messengers in the past. That's the meaning of the verses. And from these verses we learn that the actions of the hearts and the intentions of everybody, are, is, these are very important things. You don't have to actually murder somebody to be labeled a murderer. All you have to do is accept the murder. You don't have to deny the verses of Allah or participate in killing the prophets. You don't have to make fun of Prophet Muhammad والسلام, and his companions and his sunnah. All you have to do is be living in a different age, hundreds and hundreds of years away, and make fun of those who have lihya, or make fun of the sisters who wear the hijab, or reject the truth when it comes to you when somebody tells you using credit loans and usury, or selling alcohol and doing things like this is haram, all you have to do is say, no, you are very strict. You are a fundamentalist. You are an extremist. Because a modern day Muslim will sell alcohol. A modern day Muslim will do the things that modern day people do. And guess what? If you were living during the time of Prophet Muhammad والسلام, you would be among those fighting his sunnah you would be among those fighting the religion of Islam. Just like those Jews, when they called Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala poor, they were equal to those living before them that were killing the other prophets and messengers. Having said that, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness for me and for you and for all Muslims. أَقُولُ مَا تَسْمَعُونَ وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ الْعَظِيمَ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ وَتُوبُوا إِلَيْهِ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ
الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده سيدنا محمد All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone peace and blessings be upon the Messenger of Allah The scholar At-Tirmidhi and Ibn Majah and also Imam Ahmad Imam Ahl Sunnah they collected a hadith after Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam. This hadith was narrated by Abi Kapsha, one of the companions of Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam. And part of the hadith goes like this. This world, innama dunya li arba'ati nafar. This world is for four types of people. Rajulun atahu Allahu malan wa ilma. Fahuwa yattaqi fihi rabbah. Wa yasilu fihi rahimah. Wa ya'arifu lillahi fihi haqqah. The first type is somebody who, who had Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with wealth and wisdom, wealth and knowledge. So he respects the rights of Allah in his wealth. He uses this wealth in ways of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He guards and preserves the rights of Allah in his wealth and the rights of those that are next to his skin. He, you know, uses the money and earns the money and uses it in the way that Allah has approved. This is the first kind. And he said, the Prophet ﷺ said, وَهُوَ فِي أَعْلَى الْمَنَازِلِ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ This is the one in, in the highest status in the sight of Allah. The second type is somebody who had, was blessed with knowledge but no money. وَرَجْلٌ أَتَاهُ اللَّهُ عِلْمًا وَلَمْ يُؤْتِهِ مَالًا So, this second type, he has wisdom. He has guidance. But he doesn't have money. But he looks at the first one. He looks at the other types. If I had money, I would spend it in the same manner that this that person, guided person, has spent it. So he reaches that level with him, with the first type. Even though he doesn't have that money, he doesn't have that wealth. But his intention is, if he had it, he would spend it in the same manner. The third type, he said, alayhi salatu wasalam, وَرَجُلٌ لَمْ يُؤْتِهِ اللَّهُ مَالًا I'm sorry. The third type is وَرَجُلٌ آتَاهُ اللَّهُ مَالًا وَلَمْ يُؤْتِهِ عِلْمًا The third type is somebody that the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with a lot of money but no guidance. فَهُوَ لَا يَتَّقِي فِيهِ رَبَّهِ So he does not preserve the rights of Allah in that wealth. He doesn't achieve the goals that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to achieve in this life if we have wealth. So the Prophet ﷺ says to him, he is in the worst of categories. And somebody, the fourth type is, the Prophet ﷺ said, somebody that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given no wealth and no money either. So he looks at the third type, he said, if I had a lot of money, I would be doing what this person is doing. I would be going gambling with this money, I would be buying a lot of haram things, I would be investing this money in haram business, I would do this. So he is in the lowest category with the third type. This hadith, brothers and sisters, in the verse that I said in the beginning, they tell us about something very, very, very important. And that is, you don't have to be rich to show Allah that you're gonna obey Him. You don't have to be famous to use your fame for the sake of Allah. You don't have to be beautiful to wear hijab. You don't have to be married to wear your hijab. You don't have to be stable financially to stop using usury and credit cards. Some people, some people, and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance for everybody, they condition their obedience to Allah upon certain things. And guess what? These are failing the tests because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ فِي مَا أَتَكُمْ He will test you with what you have received, with what you have. He's testing you right now. You don't have to have that money to spend it in the way that He wants. You don't have to be stable financially to stop doing haram things. You don't have to say, sisters, who say, I'm only gonna wear my hijab after I find a man and get married. You don't worship Allah, you worship the man. We don't have to wait for certain conditions to live the life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to live. Because we can be taken by the same sins those were taken hundreds of years ago if our hearts fall in the same category.
And that's what the verse of the Qur'an that I mentioned earlier tells us, and that's what this hadith tells us, is that your heart, your intentions can get you to the highest places even if you've got nothing to give. And your intention can get you to the lowest tiers of the fire, even if you're not committing anything of, of actual magnitude of haram, only because your heart is where that person's heart is. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify our hearts. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and give us from that guidance and from His fear that which stops us from using His sins. Allahumma qsim lana min khashiyatika ma tuhulu bihi baynana wa bayna ma'asik wa min ta'atika ma tuballughuna bihi jannatak wa min al-yaqeen ma tuhawunu bihi alayna masaib al-dunya wa matta'na bi asma'ina wa abisarina abadan ma ahiyitana wa da'alhu al-waritha minna wa da'al thakrana ala man zalamana ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا إلى النار مصيرنا واجعل الجنة هي دارنا وقرارنا واجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير والموت راحة لنا من كل شر ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وجد وبارك وأنعم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين الله سبحانه وتعالى يقول لنا في القرآن وإذ تأذن ربكم لئن شكرتم لأزيدنكم ولئن كفرتم إن عذابي لشديد ويقول وإذ قال ربكم ادعوني أستجب لكم وقال ربكم ادعوني أستجب لكم إن الذين يستكبرون عن عبادتي سيدخلون جهنم داخلين فادعوا الله يستجب لكم واسألوه يعطكم وانصروه ينصركم واشكروه يزدكم وسبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيم الصلاة